Hola, mi amigos. Chris Marcus here with you for Arcade Economics. It's Espanol for Sapio. Live in Mexico, aka the silver capital of the planet, in advance of Silver Fest. Because if you love silver, and frankly, who doesn't love silver? Jeff Christian. Wouldn't you want to be at the biggest silver party of the year? Where we talk about what's been building beneath the surface of the silver market and with a silver celebrity lineup. Ladies and gentlemen of analysts, Rob Keynes, newsletter writers, handsome Dave Kranzler, Chris Powell, Rafi the Wise, Silver Bill Murphy, James Pitbull. I don't necessarily think of JP Morgan Research as the smart money. Anderson. Andy Schechtman, who has actually been alive since before Comex Silver Futures contract tracks were invented. Chris, I'm a yield guy. Marcus, and of course, the lovely marketing director. Who doesn't love silver? You are, will there be any pool parties at Silverfest too? <laughs> yes, there'll be pool parties at Silverfest too. What do you think those would look like? Um, probably a lot like Watch out! the party we were at yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I love you're, it. You're sexy. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> YouTubers and the top silver mines in the industry. But before we dig into what you'll be getting at this year's Silver Fest, let's take a quick review of some of the wild things that have been happening to beat the surface of the silver market this year that most people on the planet don't even know about. And you touched on this idea of uh, there being a bit of a supply crunch, and that's led to some speculation, particularly with regards to silver. In terms of thinking about how are you gonna create a squeeze? You point out that it would be impossible to force a squeeze in something like silver. In terms of thinking about how are you gonna create a squeeze? There isn't enough physical silver to cover paper silver. The shorts are the ETFs. We saw that debate sort of front and center during the recent silver yeah. squeeze attempt in February. I know that's a huge discussion in the internet. The ETS buy the physical, they turn around and they sell on the COMEX. Is there enough physical silver to cover paper silver? Ed Moy, former U.S. Mint director. I don't think so. Which of course seems to be in direct contrast to Jeff Curry, global commodity head of Goldman Sachs. In terms of thinking about how are you going to create a squeeze, the shorts are the ETFs. The ETFs buy the physical, they turn around and they sell on the COMEX to be able to hedge that physical position like any other corporate. I've never heard of any other corporate aside from Goldman Sachs that hedges like that. Supplies are extremely tight. I put in orders that uh, that can't get filled. The shorts are the ETFs. He explained the it ETFs all. ETFs buy the physical. They turn around and they sell on the COMEX. To be wait, wait, wait. If the fund is just a trust, you're just taking money and people want to buy silver. What? What, what are you shorting? Goldman Sachs. Uh, you legal? Someone in the legal department. I called you. I warned you. <laughs> I want to stop sending this guy out. So Ed, if I'm understanding you correctly, you do not think that there is enough physical silver and physical gold to cover paper silver and paper gold. Yeah. Yes, I, I do think that there's a gap. The U.S. Mint stopped taking orders. The main reason why I don't think it's possible to squeeze one of these markets. Jeff Curry of Goldman Sachs. Like what the Hunt brothers did in 1980. Jeff Curry of Goldman Sachs said you can't have a short squeeze. There are ongoing shortages in the silver market. I don't think it's possible to squeeze one of these markets. Jeff Curry of Goldman Sachs. I think you're wrong, but I want you to clarify it. See, Jeff, even the even the guy interviewing you realized you were lying. You got position limits in these markets. Which, of course, sounds good in concept, except for the fact that Goldman Sachs routinely violates the limits. Now, of course, it's understandable if you might think that the regulators would be all over this. The CFTC put out a, a public statement around the silver markets, and you're keeping a close eye on that. Can you follow up uh, on what the CFTC may be doing? The events around the silver markets happened, you know, shortly after I took over like in late January to, to control the sort of the price and the volatility uh, of the silver contracts. What? Isn't this the commissioner of the CFTC? Now, if you're thinking that's a bit of an unusual comment from the acting chairman of the regulatory agency that's supposed to prevent crime in the silver market, well, frankly, I can understand because in my 20-year financial career, which includes 11 years on Wall Street and an MBA from Wharton, I've never heard anybody say anything like that, especially when the LBMA even admitted a few months later fears actually emerged as to whether there was enough silver should the demand continue at this pace. 
Is that what Rostad Venom was so scared of? The LBMA. They have their problems. The London Bullion Market Association. They're some of the largest banks in the world. Overstated their silver holdings in April. They got some inventory wrong. It comes at such a, a, a bad time, I would say. Things like that do happen. In the precious metals industry, when investors are, are trying to figure out how much supply is in the market. I don't okay. know what the situation is. Uh, JP Morgan says that they don't have any naked positions in, in silver. I, I have no way of knowing. And two, I guess a lot of... The reasons that people didn't buy this, you know, it's an accounting error. I'm not saying their hands are always entirely clean. Is because it kind of coincided around the same time that we saw a lot of activity um, in the silver space. I know that's a huge discussion in the internet. So just bad timing, you think? You're short JP Morgan and you are critical or concerned about their head of global commodities that, that Blythe Masters doesn't really know what she's doing. I said that. You oh, said that. that you were she was giving an interview and she said, Gold never settles. And she was right, because if it ever did settle physical paper, it, it, it wouldn't work. You oh said that, that you were concerned about the head of commodities, and I know it's Blythe Masters. It's not supposed to settle. Blythe Masters said that years ago. Part of the reason I'm sure J.P. Morgan calls is because of their commodities department. Why their commodities department? What are your concerns specifically? Well, uh, the head of the department doesn't know as much as some people know about commodities. Well, first of all, that's always true. And sometimes that person, I won't say whether it's a male or a female, gets overextended and makes mistakes. And I suspect you're going to find more mistakes coming out of the J.P. Morgan Commodities Department. And if he says there's manipulation in the market, of course there is. In, in my book, A New Case for Gold, which is also a national bestseller, I, I actually give a handbook on how to manipulate the markets. But there are many reasons to be short, J.P. Morgan. I explain how it's done. Many reasons to be short, lots of things. I'm short lots of stocks. It's not just, not just J.P. Morgan that I'm short. Let's not tar them. Poor mm -hmm. J.P. Morgan. So it does go on. Um, there are backstories. There are some really, really uh, major fundamental things going on. I'm not saying that's not happening, but I wouldn't put too much weight on one like little accounting error. Okay, fine. But what about their silver position? Does that worry you at all? The paper open interest, if you count futures and over-the-counter derivatives and other, other co contracts, option contracts, is always, always a market that's much more prone to risk than people generally recognize. You've had people since the mid-1980s say that, oh, there's not enough silver to meet all the demand. You didn't need to manipulate precious metals prices down for the last 40 years. People look at these inventories and they compare them to open interest and futures contracts or other contracts and go, oh, there's not enough precious metals to deliver on all these contracts. So if everybody who has open interest takes delivery, the market blows up into faults. If you read these contracts, they're always termination clauses, force majeure clauses. First off, it doesn't default. It just changes to a cash only uh, settlement. A market that trades in a day uh, 250 times the supply of metal available for good delivery over a year. It just changes to a cash only uh, settlement. It says in the rule book, we are not a source of supply. Or it resolves it in a different way. They also have another rule saying they can change the rules. That party's come to a screeching halt. And further verification that Ed Moy of the U.S. Mint was right, that there is a massive gap in the amount of paper silver that's been created versus the amount of physical silver that actually exists. Even the LBMA, who is actually sponsored by both Jeff Curry's Goldman Sachs and criminal enterprise J.P. Morgan admitted it would have been only a matter of weeks before London's existing stock was used up. Are we on the road to economic recovery post-pandemic here? No. But to put into perspective just how scared Jeff and his Goldman gangster friends were that they were actually going to run out of silver and have their scheme implode, at the same time he was going on TV and saying it was impossible for a short squeeze to occur. You point out that it would be impossible to force a squeeze in something like silver. The risk managers at some of the bigger banks uh, who have traded the futures markets pretty aggressively. In terms of thinking about how are you going to create a squeeze? Uh, probably came reasonably close to having a religious experience. The ETS buy the physical, they turn around and they sell on the COMEX. Not only did the LBMA admit that the price started to rise once they stopped writing so many additional paper contracts. In terms of thinking about how are you going to create a squeeze? But JP Morgan, Goldman and the bullion banks even got caught changing the SLV and Silver Trust prospectuses specifically to give them legal protection against a short squeeze in the silver market. To tamp down um, what could have been a much worse situation. Were I the risk manager for a large bank, 
that would give me cause for concern. But I have a little clarity on the market structure he's talking about, because amazingly enough... Today, we will receive reports from CCP Risk Subcommittee co-chairs Alicia Crichton at Goldman Sachs. Wow, I wonder if she knows Jeff. Because that would be weird if Goldman Sachs was somehow involved with the regulators. And they sell on the COMEX. Yet at least it's not as if... They had been spoofing the market for the better part of eight years and silver, gold, platinum, palladium, I mean, all of the precious metals. <laughs> Which at least according to Rostin Benham, CFTC, J.P. Morgan did hundreds of thousands of times. Although fortunately, at least they're not colluding with the CFTC and Goldman Sachs to set the market structure, right? Marnie Rosenberg, J.P. Morgan, I. But there are many reasons to be short, J.P. Morgan. You've seen how when the price gets hammered, people get scared. J.P. Morgan votes I. Would you say that the way the price has hung in there and that people have kept buying, it's almost like people standing up and saying, fuck you to J.P. Morgan. Thank you, Alicia. Fuck you. Get out of our silver market. I'm not disparaging them at all. So you're looking for performance information around the silver ETF? Uh, I guess you could say that, although more specifically, I'm confused of how the price of silver came down 10% when you guys claim to have added a historic amount of metal on February 2nd. You look at the flows going in and out of these ETFs, they're not that big. But, 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 but I not guess that my big. question is- That's a lie. Okay. That's a felony. Not that big. It was record setting. Here's what you, you said the day before you, you made that lie. Big firms pay kind of what feel like speeding tickets. The trust may suspend or restrict issuance of the baskets. For this stuff, and then they carry on. Are you fucking kidding me? I was once taken aside by the, uh, well, it was tapped and asked to give a private consultation to the head of global commodities trading for Goldman Sachs. And he wanted to kind of pick my brain on China a little bit. So at the end of it, I said, you know, I got a question for you. Um, your research department just came out with a report that said gold was going to $1,000 an ounce. Um, and he looked at me, he goes, well, no one listens to them. I mean, this, this, was, this was the head of, it was Goldman's research department. It's incredibly unlikely. The head of trading for Goldman said, we don't listen to our own research department. The ETS buy the physical, they turn around and they sell on the COMEX. Okay, that explains it. It's incredibly unlikely. But so I don't, you know, I don't necessarily put a lot of weight on that, but. Get ready for the greatest gathering of silver enthusiasts and aficionados the world has ever seen. At Silverfest 2, where we will be discussing how great life can actually be after the dollar. Brandon for president. At Silverfest, brought to you by Arcadia Economics. From October 28th through the 30th, tune into a variety of silver seminars from such stars of the precious metals world as David Morgan, James Anderson, Rob Keats, Chris Marchese, Rafi Farber, Chris Powell, Andy Schechtman, Yara Vinay, Keith Newmeyer, Dr. Peter Maga, David Stein, Silver Bill Murphy, Denver Dave Kranzler, Steve Cope, and your host of Silverfest, Chris Marcus. And quite thankfully to our generous sponsors, who also happen to be many of the top silver mining and exploration companies in the world, not only can you attend Silverfest 2 online for free, but you may even wind up winning some silver, like so many of the people who attended Silverfest last year did. We will also be talking about option trading in the silver market. As a student of tail risk, 1% is different than 2%, half a percent, or 0%. We're actually going to calculate how much silver is worth, as well as taking metal off the COMEX. We'll be having lunch with BlackRock Silver, dinner with Kuya Silver and Raina Silver, I'll be digging into NLP and the psychology of trading. Oh, and did I mention that we might be giving away a lot of silver? Plus each day, of course, there is also morning yoga and meditation. Yada, you're going to do yo yoga at Silverfest. We are going to do yoga at Silverfest. Yoga at as I do. Surf men, show the abs. These guys teach you how to surf. See? Yeah, that's a good one. Bueno. You teach surf lesson next week, surf man. As well as learning how to barter. Imagine getting anything and everything you want without spending a single penny. Blows them away that I'm able to basically obtain anything I want through bartering. But we will even be opening the Arcadia Barter Post. And I traded a broken Xbox for that. And talking about things like the Arcadia Silver Exchange. At Old Ford I traded for, I traded some yaks for that. There's a story for you. I. <laughs> I <laughs> 
I, uh, I raise yaks. So the obvious question here, how does m do it? Click below for free registration and join Arcadia Economics at Silverfest. Brandon on two. Tell your friends, tell your family, because the silver season is upon us. Wouldn't you want to be at the biggest silver party of the year? Hut, hut, Brandon. When people leave here, I want them to have a smile on their face.